Hello, I'm Brandi Agerbeck of Loosetooth.com, and I help you reclaim drawing as your best thinking tool so you can see and shape your life and your work in new ways. <laughs> It is September and it is a back to school time and I've got my handy dandy backpack here because what I want to do today is share with you the visual thinkers back to school supply list. So I say back to school because there's plenty of us who are actually not entering classrooms this time of year. Now certainly I'm pining for it. It will surprise no one that I was an indoorsy kid and I do not like the heat and I did not particularly like the summer, and most of my summer was planning my back-to-school outfit. <laughs> Just waiting for the day that I got to go back to that bus stop and wait for the bus and go to school. Yes, I was that kid. So, in the spirit of this beautiful back-to-school uh, time of year and with my uh, super giant, <laughs> super, I look like I'm this big compared to this backpack. <laughs> Uh, thanks to this backpack full of visual thinking supplies, I'd love to walk you through just some key materials that I think are really, really useful and some mindset shifters that are very, very useful to help you in your visual thinking practice. Again, this does apply more broadly than just if you are going back to school as a student or going back to school as a teacher. Uh, it's for anyone who wants to do more visual thinking in your life. So now let's get into this backpack. <laughs> so, <laughs> wrong zipper, so many zippers. <laughs> All right, so first things first, and this is the shift from old school. And what is old school? Old school is things like this composition notebook where inside you have got portrait pages, so vertical orientated pages, and lots and lots of lines. No lines. Lines don't help our visual thinking. When we think in this mode, this old school mode, it's very much about being very, very text-based and very linear. Our thinking goes from left to right and top to bottom. So what we want to do is shift away from line paper, no line paper. <laughs> we want to shift to new school. Two things. One, our piece of paper is landscape format and it is gorgeously blank. So instead of going from left to right, top to bottom, your thinking can go in any direction. Again, this thinking, whether you are actually a student in class taking notes, or if you are crafting a near next speech or your next paper or your next book or your next whatever, uh, whether you're just simply trying to get a new perspective on something that's rolling around in your head, there's so many different ways this very simple shift to one, no lines, and two, from portrait to landscape can be a wonderful uh, shift into more visual thinking, more spatial thinking. So first off, I want, want you to make that simple shift in your supplies. So if you are that student, you know, if, you, if the teacher says you need notebooks, why not a sketchbook? Why not no lines? Make your notes visual. Work in the way that works best for you. So, you know, again, it's about shifting thinking, about getting out of some norms if your default is to always grab that wired notebook or that composition book off the shelf and know that you have other choices and these choices are pretty fantastic. So first thing is new school going landscape and blank with your paper. Now, in both of those examples, we actually have paper that is bound on an edge I personally, not a big fan, not a big fan of bound sketchbooks or bound notebooks. So what I recommend is that you simply get yourself some loose paper. So here what I have is just some simple um, text weight paper. So regular old, what we used to call typing paper. 
<laughs> yes, it's been a long time since I've been to school. And to get some cardstock. So this is the thicker paper. Now I like cardstock because if I'm making notes that I know I'm going to reference a lot, so let's say I'm taking notes uh, if I was taking notes in school and it was like really trying to summarize everything I was learning in chemistry, I would then have a thicker piece of paper that's easier to keep around and reference as I'm learning. So very simply just having some plain text weight paper and some cardstock paper. Um, personally, I like it when it has a really nice smooth surface. That works best for me and the, my writing utensils. but. That is your choice, whether it's bright white, whether it's cream, whether it's smooth or a little rough. Your call, your preference. Here's what I like. Nice, smooth, bright white paper. Now, how do we keep this paper wrangled? How do we keep it orderly? Very, 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 very simple. A binder. <laughs> That's it. And again, when we see a binder like this, we assume it's going portrait because that's the way we usually use binders. But there is absolutely no reason you can't use your binder in landscape format. Now, the reason I like binders so much is it's extremely simple to just open up the rings and move stuff around. And I also have a complete video that is just beautifully dorky all about um, having three binders that I run my business by. So personally, I don't have like tons and tons and tons of binders on my shelf. I have three binders of three different widths so that uh, I'm thinking about portability. I don't want to bring around the massive binder that's this thick and weighs tons in this backpack. Like this backpack's filled to the brim. Right now for this video, way too full, <laughs> way too full. Um, so I like doing a couple different binders, a couple different widths. I have one that's even smaller than this. This is the medium binder um, so that I can bring exactly what I need and then have the sort of larger reference binders either here in the studio or back at home. But the nice thing is this binder lets you do a whole lot of things. It can change semester to semester. It can change from project to project. When a project is finished, I take those pages out. I clip them with a binder clip. I set them aside if I still want those pieces of paper around. They may not even serve me anymore, but um, it's very, very flexible. Whereas if you have something that is permanently bound, like, or <laughs> stay there, Apple. Uh, like this notebook, uh, the pages only go in one order. You can't stop and move things around and resort and reorganize for yourself. So, like I said, we usually think of our binders going this direction, um, but the great thing is they don't have to. They can be landscape mode. And to that, uh, uh, to that end, uh, if you want to switch from portrait to landscape, a simple way to keep you in that mode is if you have a binder that has a sleeve on the front, make some landscape oriented drawing or image that helps you stay in this mode. So this is thinking more spatially instead of that old left to right, top to bottom. Again, our thinking can go in 360 directions. Super simple way to keep your papers together. Binder, easy peasy. Two things, one, is if you do a binder, you're gonna want a three-hole punch. Nice thing is this three-hole punch costs like $7, I think, less than $10. And uh, I can punch and punch and punch and punch, get worksheets, get printouts, get handouts, get whatever, punch it, put it in the binder, good to go. I do recommend getting an actual metal heavy-duty binder or heavy-duty three-hole punch because um, it can hold more pages at once and it is the kind of thing that if you get one of those really flimsy plasticky ones that may be like even the kind that fits in the binder itself, it's not going to be very sturdy over time and also it's going to be harder on your hands. There's really nice springs here that keep your hands nice and healthy. We want that. We want jazz hands. We want jazz hands, visual thinking for a very long time. <laughs> Drawing and visual thinking for a long time. So hole punch for your binder, simple. Thing number two about binders is, very simply, having a few uh, sleeves. So we can use these sleeve, these page protectors, a couple different ways. So here I've got one where simply it's holding some loose pages in my binder. And here, much like that cardstock idea, 
if I had one key drawing that was really important to what I was working on, whether I was in school studying, whether I was at work working on a project, whether it was a really important reference drawing for my own personal self and work in my life, <laughs> um, I could use that sleeve to hold that drawing and make sure that it is protected. And if I wanna pull it out and take a look at it, I can. Super simple. Binder, couple sleeve protectors, uh, three hole punch, good to go. So, very simple, right? Not expensive, not fancy. I actually don't want you to go expensive or fancy because it's so important that when you get these supplies for yourself that you use them. And when we get the fancy thing, we get intimidated by it. It's too precious, it's too beautiful. We're gonna mess it up. We want to mess it up. <laughs> That's how we get amazing work done, is by messing stuff up and making messy drawings. So get some basic stuff, use it, wear it out. Fantastic. One very simple last thing for holding papers. I like these little plastic sleeves, um, just something that's a little heavy duty that holds whatever I need to tuck in there. So if I don't need a whole binder, this is a really simple way to pop some pieces of paper into this, different sizes, and it is a little bit protected and ready to go. This particular one has like a little slidey thing uh, to close it up. I have plenty of these that have lost that little slidey thing. You know what? It still works. It's fine. So again, loose leaf paper versus bound paper is going to help you sort through your different drawings, your different notes whatever is you're working on and move things around and reorganize for yourself. So that is why I personally prefer this loose paper over something that is bound. And again, anytime you have this paper, turn it 90 degrees, think more spatially. Now, we've talked about kind of that regular old letter size paper, two variations on that. One is, where's my other piece of paper? Where did it go? Did I lose it? It's in here somewhere. <laughs> Aha, I found it. <laughs> Having some tabloid size paper. So double letter size, 11 by 17 here in America. Um, and it's really easy just to buy a few sheets of this and it's super easy to make a larger drawing. And as you can see, by the way, I have it here in this stack, simply fold it in half and now it's as easy to pour, to um, carry around uh, as any letter, shot, letter sized sheet of paper. So again, great to have a few sheets of this size paper around if you wanna make a bigger drawing. Easy. Now, you're gonna meet one of my best friends now. It's so exciting. <laughs> Here's, we got the letter size. Uh, but we're thinking about, again, how can we shuffle, sort, and rearrange and shape these different stacks of pieces of paper. We're going to meet my bestie. Index cards. <laughs> Very simple, smaller pieces of paper. That's it. Write your paper with index cards. Craft your next speech with index cards. Take your notes with index cards. Make a to-do list with index cards. Now, I could use one single card to make a list, or as I'm working on something and a new idea comes to light, like I was just having happen at home at my dining table, I always have a stack of index cards nearby so that when that new idea comes up, I write down that new idea. I get it captured on that index card, I can write any corresponding notes and it's captured. But again, what's nice about these cards is I can shuffle and sort them. So I can make piles and piles and piles of cards, get that stuff out of my head onto those little pieces of paper. But then I can go through that stack of cards and go, okay, here is what's most important. And just decide that these are the ones I need right now for this weekend or this week. Maybe these are what I need for that next project, but you can always shuffle and sort and rearrange your stacks of index cards. Now, the beautiful thing is these are very, very cheap, but as you will see, no lines, mm -mm. no ruled index cards. Keep them unruled, keep them plain. Again, so we can think spatially, we can go in any direction. And uh, number one most important thing, like I said, they're cheap. These were actually on sale after the back to school sales. I think they were 50 cents for a hundred. And make sure 
you got a lot of them. <laughs> because then they're not precious. Then you can come up with as many ideas as you like. What? There's more? <laughs> oh, here's the last one. All right. So make sure when you are uh, creating stacks, you know, you can actually tear up scrap paper, get the same thing, get lots of little pieces of paper to work with. But uh, anytime you're working with a stack, you want to have lots and lots and lots of cards because it's never going to inhibit your brainstorming. It's never going to in inhibit your thinking. And the great thing is, if you do run out, here at least in America, it's very easy to pop over to the drugstore, go to the stationery aisle, find new cards. They may be ruled, but thankfully you can usually flip them over and use the backside. So very, very accessible, cheap, easy. The biggest thing is that you are taking these stacks You've got all these big gorgeous cards to get your ideas onto is that you've got them at hand easy to reference easy to grab a hold of easy to sort and go from there now how do you keep these guys wrangled a couple things one i have, sometimes you get plastic cases which unfortunately i don't have one with an arm's reach right now but you can find these little plastic cases uh, again here in america in drug stores you can go to stationery stores and there'll be little um plastic sleeves, you pop them in, little snaps on the front, easy, but you don't even have to get that fancy. Truly simple, simple, simple. I'm going to show you two of my favorite things in this little guy. <laughs> so simple. One is hair bands. Now, clearly I don't have any hair anymore, but this was, <laughs> these were uh, little knit hair bands that I used when I was, when I had hair and uh, would pull it back. And I actually prefer these two rubber bands because they last freaking forever. And you can very simply wrap them around a stack of index cards and they are good to go. Um, so they don't get brittle and crack, crack and you know fall apart, snap apart like regular rubber bands do. So simple. I mean, I have a pack of hair bands that I've used forever and ever and ever. So that's one very simple option. Another super simple option is binder clips. Just make sure you get a few different sizes because one stack may be itty bitty, like this guy. Another stack may be a little bigger like this guy. Um, so just make sure, I think I got one giant one in here somewhere. There's my ha ha. <laughs> I see my giant binder clip. You could, I think, you know, this looks like a hundred cards here with this super giant binder clip. Super simple, not expensive. Just make sure you pick a couple different packs up. Maybe it's a multi-pack with different sizes. Maybe it's a couple different packs, but as long as you got them all contained somewhere, these will last you a really long freaking time for your cards. Now, here is a pro tip. Thank you, Carmen. Carmen was is in my online course called the Agerbeck Method, and she also joined me in the lab in Hamburg just a couple weeks ago, and I never thought of this. I love it. It's so simple. She takes the binder clips, and she can, um, she do like this. Can you see that? Yeah. It stands up the cards. So you could have all these different groups of your cards standing up thanks to your binder clip, just spread it out like this, and now it has a little stand. Ta -da, ta -da. Hooray, thanks Carmen. <laughs> so, so simple. And really just the idea is that you have a couple different ways to wrangle those stacks of cards. Easy, 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 cheap, 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 usable for ember. So those are my good buddies, the index cards. Now, we've talked about what to draw on with everything up to this point. Now let's talk about what to draw with. There's gonna be a lot of different opinions about pens and pencils, and you need to find what material works best for you. That's it. Um, people have different preferences on the way different materials feel. Totally understandable. So, personally, I hate ballpoint pens hate them. Just do not like the way they feel. Don't like the way they write. Blech. I have one really beautiful, smooth ballpoint pen that I bought and I write checks with it. 
that's about it. <laughs> so, so this is just a personal preference. If you love ballpoint pens, if you love rollerball pens, knock yourself out, enjoy. Me personally, I like felt tip pens because I don't like that. Oh, ugh. so my best friend for small scale note taking are paper mate flares. You may have a different brand you love. As many of you, as many of you know, I love Neulands for large scale work, but when it comes to working on index cards and working in my own sketchbook or smaller drawings, this is it. Paper mate flares. Now, why do I love paper mate flares? Couple different reasons. One, cheap and accessible, but not low quality. So you can buy these at any office supply store. And nowadays, especially with the back to school sales, you can find these beautiful packs of a lot of different colors. Um, they last a long time. You know, yes, if you leave the cap on for a long time, they're gonna bite the dust, that's gonna happen. But they last quite a long time. And I think one, I just like the feel of it. Like I said, it's important to me. Two is that um, they are, you know, you get a nice clean line. Actually, that one's dead. <laughs> you get a nice clean line, um, a nice bright line, and uh, it dries right away. Like there's no, you don't have to wait for any ink to dry. It's not, so it's really easy to draw fast, and it's really easy to layer different lines on top of each other with very little smudging, just because of the way um, this particular ink hits the page. So. Huge fan of paper make flares. Highly, highly, highly recommend them. For me, when I'm thinking about pens, anything I'm writing with, I'm thinking about a couple different things. One is scale and one is color. So with scale, what I wanna do is um, think about having thick lines and thin lines. So for instance, wherever my new idea card went, I do have a couple Sharpies, these thicker lines. Now, personally, not a big Sharpie fan because of them being alcohol-based and the fumes. Just the deal is I get very sensitive to, excuse me, I get very sensitive to uh, chemical smells. Uh, so I am always going to choose something water-based over something alcohol-based. So definitely consider your long-term health when you're thinking about the materials that you choose. But I'm thinking about thickness in that I personally have set up this system I've used for over 20 years where I use index cards like this. I put the title across the, stop, across the top consistently with a thicker pen, usually a Sharpie, and then I can write any kind of details I want under that main topic. So I use my regular paper mate flare for that. Color wise, the main thing is that, and you'll learn about this if you read the Idea Shapers or you join me in the Agribeck method, I think about colors in pairs and trios. So I wanna use light colors and dark colors so that I can organize my information. I'm not using all of these colors, just not the way I roll. But I have all the colors if I need them because if I need to color coordinate, I've got the colors at hand. So. Personally, super loved paper mate flares. Wonderful, easy to get, reasonably priced, last a long time, nice bright colors, hit the page beautifully, feel good in my hand, all those wonderful things. But like I said, you may find that you have a different kind of pen, a different kind of writing instrument that works better for you. Whatever those are, think of three things. <laughs> Scale, again, have, being able to do thicker and thinner lines. Two, color, having choices in the different colors, and three, health. Again, I want you to be healthy because these things you're using are never farther than arm's length. And think about how often, especially if you're this kind of person, it's right up there in your face. <laughs> so think about your health when you're choosing different materials. That is, those are my favorites when it comes to pens, paper make flares. Again, your choice, what works for you, Pencils, I personally, personally, just really, really, really prefer the feel of a pen over a pencil. I'm not somebody who pencils a lot of stuff in. Um, I do have a couple around if I need them. Ta-da, this is actually more for decoration than it is for use. These are, it would take me probably a lifetime to use this many pencils because I just don't use pencils that often. Much more inclined to use pens. But I do wanna say, um, when you're thinking about pencils, high, higher quality pencil. So this is a Ticonderoga uh, black pencil. I also really love Black Warrior, Murado Black Warrior pencils. Just a really nice uh, feel to the pencil. 
uh, just spend a little bit more to get a good brand pencil. It doesn't have to be really fancy. It's just if you get those super, super, super cheap ones, or you think about like the novelty pencils they give kids, they're just the, 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 the um, graphite is like a little more waxy and it just, again, I know it's subtle and maybe this does not matter to you, but there's sort of like this waxy ishy way that it, it like draws, it doesn't draw a nice line. It's all waxy, it's weird. I suggest avoiding it. Now, if you do want to get fancier, sort of 201 level, uh, you can check out the Palomino Blackwing. So that's these guys that come in a diff couple different varieties. So here's another one. This is this one says 602. I don't even know what that means. Uh, these also feel beautiful. They're high quality pencils. But what I really like about this is these have these little removable erasers. So think of how, how often you don't really get very far in using the pencil because the eraser has gone. Now these, you actually pull out this little brackety thing and inside is your eraser. So you can replace the eraser. So that's kind of a, you know, 201 level if you're thinking about school parlance. So something like this is 101, this is 201. Uh, definitely avoid really, really cheap waxy pencils. Pretty simple. But what I do like about these Palomino black wings is that you can replace these erasers. So let's talk a little bit more about erasers because we make mistakes. And if you're using pencils, you gotta want to, you're going to want to use an eraser. So um, there is actually, I forgot to mention up front, a PDF of a supply of this supply list. A few more details than I'm talking about in this very long, robust video. But um, I want to talk about um, mention that there is a PDF that if you go to let's see, oh, here it is loosetooth.com slash b2s back to school you can find that pdf and um yes i do ask you to sign up for my mailing list to get that pdf but that is free for you to use and there's a discount for my big online course so any of these details if you're if you're like you know driving on the train whatever listening to this right now don't watch a video while you drive forget that no, not if you're driving. If you're riding on the train <laughs> or doing something else uh, and are somewhat uh, distracted, you can always go get that PDF to get all these details. Let's get back to erasers. So erasers, again, we're going to make mistakes. No biggie. Do want to recommend what most people want to use are the sort of classic pink erasers. Now, much like my not liking rubber bands because they dry up and get brittle, Pink erasers do the same thing, and then they're just not useful anymore. That'll happen on uh, pencils over time. You you know have dead erasers because they're all dried out. Highly recommend getting what's called a polymer eraser. So if you have not done an art class, a drawing class, you may not have heard of these guys, and these guys are fantastic because they are very smooth. Uh, they don't tear up the paper, and they last a long time. So I have got an eraser in here, a polymer eraser. This guy, I this might be from college, <laughs> which was 20-some years ago. So, I mean, they last a long time. Again, this is not about having a thousand different erasers. It's just get one that feels nice, works well, and will live a long time with a polymer eraser. So that's some things to recommend around erasers. And oh, in here I've also got, this is an example of that pack of the little erasers for the Palomino Black Wings. So again, you might spend a little bit more for this pencil. You get a pack of erasers, it's gonna last you a long freaking time. So as long as you don't lose the pencil or somebody walks away with it, it's a good investment. <laughs> I know that sounds really silly, but it is. It's going to last you a super long time and let you do lots and lots and lots and lots of visual thinking. Now, I will make one small exception for ballpoint pens, and that is this. I still hate the way they feel, but ever since I was a little tyke, I have always loved these multicolor pens where you can fit all sorts of different colors in one pen, the clicky pen. They still feel awful, but I still think they're snazzy. <laughs> so... <laughs> All right, so uh, one last thing about writing utensil. Oh, 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 back up, back up, back up, back up, back up. So if this is, if I say, so I say avoid the pink pearl, pink erasers. Sorry, pink pearl, just longevity issue. 101 level would be a uh, polymer, white polymer eraser. 
lasts a long time, super easy, super soft. 201 level is something like this Pentel Click Eraser. So this is a polymer eraser, just like that rectangular one, but it is in a plastic case like a pen. Now, why do I like this? This would be a 200 level, uh, 201 level, but still only a few dollars. You get a pack of the um, a pack of the refills, and you are good to go for a very very long time. Why I like this eraser and recommend it? One is you get a lot of good control. So especially if you are drawing something and you just like you know if you're making maybe it's more representational drawing, more of a fine art drawing. Um, and you need some control where you just want to erase in a little tiny section of your drawing, this is going to give you the control. And two, I like that uh, you can retract the eraser back in the case, in the, the um, barrel, the housing, the whatever you want to call this, the plastic part. And when you pop it into your uh, pencil case, it doesn't get schmutzed up by anything else that's around it. So you're still going to have a nice clean white eraser for your next erasing job. So again, 200, 201 level, but highly recommend it. Again, just a few dollars and you're set for a really, really, really long time. And now that last type of writing utensil, super simple, and that is highlighters. Now I am not, I don't highlight a whole lot. Uh, and I'm, you know, no, yeah, I just don't highlight a lot. <laughs> I'm usually making my own drawings versus writing on other things like uh, highlighting in a book. Um, but you know, make sure you have some kind of highlighter around um, just because they are designed so that they don't smear. So like this is Sharpie Smear Guard. So clearly if it's Smear Guard, you shouldn't be smearing. But you wanna have some kind of highlighter. Uh, so if you do like highlighting, it's gonna work for you because sometimes other kind of pens, these don't really so much, but if you wanna actually block out, you know, an entire line of something, uh, you're not going to want it to smear. Highlight. So just very quickly, having a couple highlighters around, good idea. Again, doesn't have to cost a lot of money. Personally, I am completely allergic to neon colors. Blue highlighters are my favorite, so I would use these guys, but that's only a personal preference. You may have pink as your power color, or this fluorescent yellow may be just gives you life. Enjoy. It's yours. Have at it. <laughs> so again, think about highlighters, just having a couple on hand. Super, super simple. What else do I have here in my little pencil case? Ha ha ha! Pencil sharpeners. So simple. If you're going to have a pencil, have a pencil sharpener. Um, now this kind costs less than a dollar and will last you forever. It's just a metal housed uh, pencil sharpener. I do recommend if you are using a pencil case, whatever kind of pencil case you may be using, to get the kind of pencil sharpener like these guys that are enclosed because when you sharpen your pencil, your shavings are gonna end up here or end up here and not get all over everything. That's it. Not really much more to say than that other than if you do get this kind with a uh, that where it is has a place to catch the pencil sha shavings, just make sure it's actually constructed well enough that it's gonna stay closed. I know it's simple, but it's worth mentioning because you know having having this one's fine. This, this one passed the, pass the brandy test. But um, if it did flip open in your case, you're gonna have icky little pencil shavings everywhere. And eh. if we can avoid it, let's avoid it, right? Yeah, all right. So <laughs> pencil sharpener, very simple. We got stuff to write on, stuff to write with, stuff to erase things, uh, mistakes we made with the pencils, ways to sharpen the pencil, ways to hold together stuff. None of this is terribly complicated um, and it's all very simple, easy, accessible materials to keep you thinking visually. Now, what do I have? Oh, one last thing, some more erasers. Only last thing here in my little case, and this is so simple. Uh, this is something I learned as a graphic facilitator making super giant drawings on walls, but this is mailing labels. So this is just a pack of mailing labels and um, having them around in a pocket in your binder or in your, uh, in your case. I do like keeping them in the case because it just keeps pencil uh, smudges off of it. Um, so what do you use these for? Another kind of eraser. You make a mistake on your drawing and maybe I decided I didn't want details there for whatever reason. I just tear off a little piece of 
mailing label, and I've just erased that on my paper. <laughs> and all I did was tear it off the piece of the mailing label. So again, it's not fancy. It's very useful, very adaptable, not expensive. Just grab a pack, good to go. Mailing labels, easy peasy. So let's see, I'm checking my list. Beautiful, all right. Now let's talk about what do we use to hold these different supplies. You need a case. I personally, I just picked up this case and uh, it's kind of grippy and rubbery and a little odd, but what I do like is it's see-through. So if I am grabbing it and wondering, okay, do I have, you know, do I have my clicky eraser? I do have my clicky eraser. Oh, is there a binder clip in there? Look, there's a binder clip. <laughs> So again, it's nice that it's see-through. It's not, you know, absolutely pivotal. I do have a couple other kind of case examples in here. So let me show you a few other options. Um, one is, like this is a case I've had for years. Um, very simple, not too big. Just happens to be nice that I've got, it's got a little clip on it. Um, but what I like is it's not too large. I don't think I have had to use the clip much, but it's, why not? Hey, it's there. But like this is an example of exactly what I carry around, have carried around in my case. So here I've got a lot of flare pens and I have some other smaller pens that are thinner if I make it itty bitty drawings with different layers of information. But um, very simple pencil case, not too big. This one is not see-through, but a nice size. Super easy. This is great if you do love a binder. Get one of these pencil cases that has the holes in it to go in your binder. So you, you're not gonna wanna get it like super, super packed, so it's like, you know, too bulky, but you certainly can fit a whole heck of a lot of different things in there. Let's see, let's do a little bit of this and a little bit of that, and we'll get some erasers, and maybe, hey, what do you know? Let's get a couple small binder clips, hairband. You could even probably put some mailing labels in there. Even, let's see. A little stack of index cards and zip this up. Only gonna make your binder that much thicker. Not too shabby, right? So that's another very simple type of pencil case. Uh, little round kind of guy like this or something flat and with holes for your binder. But you do not even have to get that fancy. Um, oh, here's, here's a fancy one I got. I got this in Melbourne and it's just gorgeous. You know what, if you like fancy and it'll make you happy, it's got a little fabric in here, do it, go for it, whatever. Although I think I've only used this for computer cords because I don't want like pencil marks on it. So again, it's really beautiful, but it's so beautiful I don't wanna mess it up. <laughs> so on the flip side, you don't have to worry about messing up a Ziploc bag. Like you can use this as a pencil case. It works, it'll hold your pencils, it'll hold your pens, it'll hold your erasers, it'll hold your clips, it'll work. Is it sexy? No. Is it useful? Yes. <laughs> so again, you got a lot of different options here. You know, just, it's just a matter of having something to hold all these little bits and pieces for you. So another category, and I do think this is, you know, not absolutely critical, and I do know that these are a little bit more expensive, are post-it notes. Um, I do like having some post-it notes around. I won't necessarily even have different colors. It's often that I just want to mark something and kind of bring it to my attention. Um, so these are ones that are one and seven eighths inch by one and seven eighths inch. Yeah, they are square. Uh, so these are just kind of little guys that are a nice scale for things like index cards. I do really like these itty bitty tiny flags. Um, these are half inch by an inch and seven, uh, one and seven three quarters inch. So, you know, a little more expensive, but are, they are useful for tagging things, for bringing your attention to things. Um, they are useful. One thing you can do is if you have your whole binder of stuff and you want to make sure that you can get exactly to where you need to go next time you open your binder, you know, very simply, you can take your post-it, you know, make that little flag and then you can get exactly where you want to go. But again, it's not critical. I, you know, that's one of those things that is a little more pricey and you can still do tons and tons and tons of amazing visual thinking without any sticky notes. But I thought they were worth mentioning because they're kind of snazzy for that specific function. 
Now, we have talked about all these super basic, easy peasy materials to get your hands on, to have in your backpack, to have in your office, to have in your locker at school, wherever you may be doing your visual thinking. But I want to give one last, two last suggestions for resources, and that is how to learn more about visual thinking itself. <laughs> and you're in luck. That's what I do. <laughs> and create resources for learning about visual thinking. So two things I wanna give a shout out to is, one is, oh, this poor thing got squished at the bottom of the backpack, is my latest book, The Idea Shapers, The Power of Putting Your Thinking in Your Own Hands. So very simply, or not so simply, this is a big old robust reference of 24 different visual thinking concepts called the idea shapers. And uh, so it's a really great reference guide to learn about visual thinking. And every single idea shaper concept, each chapter ends with an at work story. So for example, there is the one of the idea shapers is the stack. So how do you use individual sheets of paper, index cards, sticky notes, but the idea is that it's modular. You get one idea down per card, and then you can sort and shuffle and sequence and shape your thinking because you are working in this format of the stack. Another idea shaper, which you have heard me mention multiple times at the top of this is the landscape. So seeing all your ideas at once on a landscape oriented piece of paper. So my job was tr to break down the complexity of visual thinking into individual concepts that were so simple. My goal was they were so simple you go, well, duh. <laughs> but then we go into all this wonderful nuance and sophistication to each of these very, very simple concepts. So each of the chapters, so the, the, each one of the chapters ends with an at work story, and those are really great ways to pick up specific techniques. So in the stack, the story is actually how I wrote this book using three landscapes and three stacks. So I went back and forth between stacks and landscapes to get this giant book done with over 400 pages and over 80,000 words and over 600 drawings with index cards and pieces of paper. It's true. So um, that's an example. Also the retort, which is about text, distilling text, pulling out what's most relevant to your project. The uh, at work story is a student who is writing a paper and she's using index cards. So that's a very specific example of how to use index cards for that specific task that is in this big beautiful book. So again, this is sort of the all 24 idea shapers laid out for you in five steps. And um, I love it. I'm proud of it. It's a, very, it's a book that makes me very, very happy. Um, and the feedback I got was either, yes, please, this is fantastic, or this looks fantastic, but I don't really know what to do with it, which is fair. If it's not, if you don't have a frame of reference for visual thinking, this is a pretty jam-packed, robust book. So to, for the folks who want help, need help navigating through these concepts, or you simply want a different modality than pages in a book, because that was definitely a big challenge, a big creative challenge was to take this work and make it fit on these 423 pages. <laughs> Um, that uh, and if you want a different modality, if you want a different format, I have an online course called the Agerbeck Method. And this is a visual representation of the nine modules of this 90 day visual thinking transformation. So, you know, both of these resources, the book, the Idea Shapers and the course, the Agerbeck Method are going to give you really concrete, accessible techniques visual thinking techniques for you to use over and over again with these very simple materials. So if this is something that's interesting to you, I would love to have you order your copy of the Idea Shapers on Amazon or join me at theagerbeckmethod.com for more details and to register, register for the online course. Uh, but those are both resources for you to develop these skills for yourself. 
And whether I see you uh, in the course or whether you pick up the book, I absolutely hope there's something in this big old video that has helped you think about what are the materials you're using, how are you using them, all to help you make drawing your best thinking tool. So again, whether you are actually back in school or you are just sort of in that September mode of brushing off the summer crumbs, <laughs> shaking off the summer heat and getting back to work, uh, I absolutely hope that you will incorporate more visual thinking in your work, whether it's your own personal work or your professional work. Please, 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 I do hope you will pick up pen and paper and draw. And thank you so much for watching. I absolutely welcome your comments. I absolutely welcome your uh, questions. And by all means, let me know what your favorite tools are. Is there anything you've seen here that you're like, oh yes, I share the index card love. <laughs> or is it something that I didn't mention that you wanna say, hey, hip hip hooray for? Let me know. So that is today's video. I definitely hope you found it useful. And again, if you would like that PDF of these resources, go to loosetooth.com slash B2S for back to school. And uh, you can download a PDF. You'll enter your email and then you'll be able to download a PDF with all this information. Again, it is organized by what I recommend avoiding things like crumbly old rubber bands or lined paper. And then I also tell you sort of what the 101 level of something is, which is not like the fact it's 101 level doesn't mean it's stupid or basic. It means it's awesome and super useful. And then 201 level, if you just want to go a bit farther, maybe spend a little more money on something, get a little more sophisticated in your tools. But again, 101, totally the way to go. Very simple materials, very accessible. So you can again reclaim drawing as your best thinking tool. Thank you so much for watching.